Sigma Tiger News all up in your grill with the hottest, juiciest beef online. All right, what do we got today? Remove the disgust, add bugs, personal transition, and spicy chip death. <laughs> TGIF people, what is going on? We're going to bang out a quick hitter here today. Disgust factor must be overcome if planet friendly insect food to become mainstream. Well, why are they trying to push this on us? Well, they're saying beef is bad, cow farts and cow burps. They've developed a shot now calling it a vaccine. Clearly is not. It's an inoculation to prevent methane from being produced. What the heck? Well, only 13% of 603 people questioned said they would be willing to regularly eat insect snacks. Many expected it to look unappealing and taste bad. Yeah, they don't want to eat that. That looks disgusting. It's bad enough just to see it around. It's ugly. People, when they make movies, they fashion it the aliens after these guys. Because people are terrified and disgusted by them. All right, boom. Disgust factor must be overcome if insect-based foods are to become mainstream, according to a study. Insects can be high in protein, and making them more acceptable could help cut the high greenhouse gas emissions that come from farming cattle. There are also potential benefits for cutting obesity, and researchers say the idea of farming insects is gaining more attention. Hundreds of millions of people in Asia, Africa, and Latin America are estimated to already eat insects to some degree. There are hopes Western attitudes could shift over time, perhaps in a similar way that food such as sushi has become mainstream. Yeah. Because, like, raw fish is a big difference than uh, insects. Insects are a potentially rich source of protein and micronutrients and could help provide a solution to a double burden of obesity and undernutrition, says study lead Dr. Lauren McGale from Edge University in Lancashire. Some insect proteins, such as ground crickets or freeze-dried mealworms, are cheaper and easier to farm, often lower in fat, and have lower environmental impact than traditional livestock. But there's one problem. Chitin, C-H-I-T-I-N. Uh, it's what people are allergic to when they're allergic to shellfish. Guess what? Crickets have chitin, and if you grind them up into flour and put them in something, you could have a reaction to it. So heads up. However, most people are still very reluctant due to preconceptions over taste and appearance. It's not only that. It's just like, no one wants to be doing that. But the study also found they were significantly more likely to give insects a go if they're ground into powder. Boom, turn it into flour, and you don't know what's inside. This has been done successfully with rice products fortified with cricket or locust flours in other parts of the world, said co-author Dr. Maxine Sharps from De Montfort University. Only 13% of 603 people questioned in the UK study said they would be willing to regularly eat insect food. So it's a little over 60 people, you know, like 66 people were like, yeah, we'll probably do it. Yeah, Some 47%. Uh, said they wouldn't eat it regularly, and 40% were unsure. Like, yeah, probably not. More than 82% of people expected insect food to be crunchy, 64% uh, salty, and 62% bitter. I don't know why you'd think it'd be bitter. Uh, only 24% said they expect to like the flavor, with just 14.4% believing insect food would look appetizing. Yeah, just think about a potato chip. They have these cricket chips, and they're like cricket tortillas, and, uh, you know, they ground it into flour press it into a triangle, fry it in fat, and then whack a whole bunch of chemical flavoring onto it. Younger people are also appeared more squeamish, and each year younger was associated with a 2% increase in saying no to the idea. So a two-year-old, totally not interested, three-year-old, slightly more, four, five, six, as the age increases, they're more likely to uh, conform to whatever they're being told. The disgust factor is one of the most important challenges to overcome, said Dr. Sharps. After all, there may be eventually no choice with climate change and projected global population growth. Yeah, we'll see. The study's findings are being presented at this week's European Congress on Obesity. ECO in Venice, we talked about ECO uh, in a previous story, talking about how uh, they did a study on muscle mass, basically, and how much intra 
muscular fat you have. And if you have weak muscles and you're obese, then you're likely to die uh, an early death. So heads up. FIFA wants global standard for punishing racist abuse and urges player to use cross-handed signals like this. Over your head. Ah, someone hurt my feelings by saying something negative about the way I look. But not to say that it's correct. You should never discriminate based off of sex or gender or color. The way someone looks, it's stupid. I mean, you discriminate based off of merit and skill. This guy can't kick the ball. You suck, buddy. Not, this guy is black. You're an N-word. Or this guy is a homosexual. You're the F-word. Yeah. So, they'll be busting out the cross. So, just like they take major spills and uh, fake falls in football or American soccer, then, uh, yeah. So, you're going to see a lot of this going on. He called me a name. And then the referee will come over and be like, what did you say? You're like, I called him a monkey. And you're like, well, that's kind of a derogatory term towards black people. He's like, this guy's from Finland. And he's like, ah, still racist. You're racist. He could be a snow monkey. Uh. So it's going to be a lot of bull, bull going on. Soccer's world body on Thursday detailed the tougher and more unified approach it wants to take to tackling racism. After months of consulting with victimized players, including Real Madrid star Vincinius Junior, the cross-handed gesture was made on a medal podium in Tokyo Olympics in 2021 by United States athlete Raven Saunders, who won silver in women's shot put. At the time, she said it was the intersection of where all people were who are opposed meet. So this is the intersection where uh, people who are oppressed meet. Yeah, okay, sure, whatever. Uh, FIFA is encouraging players to use the gesture and for referees to then cross hands to indicate they are taking action. There was little enthusiasm for it from Kick It Out as British fan groups that campaigns against racism. It said rather than introducing a new hand gestures, FIFA should focus on empowering players and their management to leave the pitch when they feel it's inappropriate. Here he is crying. Uh, he said after a training session of the Brazil team ahead of a friendly soccer match against Spain in Varal Bebas, Madrid's uh, FIFA, or whatever. Anyway, so he's crying because someone called him a name. Uh, so here we have teams whose fans or players racially abuse opponents could face disciplinary punishments such as forfeiting games, typically as a 3-0 loss as part of a five-pillar pledge on tackling discrimination. The measures will be put to FIFA member federations on Friday at the annual meeting in Bangkok. FIFA president Gianni Infantino promised months ago to make a worldwide proposal and has consulted with Brazilian star Vincinius Jr., uh, who is black and has been repeatedly abused by opposing fans in Spanish stadiums. Hmm. He broke down in tears at a news conference in March before Spain hosted Brazil in a friendly organization in fallout of a persistent abuse he faced in his adopted home. The time has come for football to unite unequivocally and commit a global community to address the issues of racism in the game. Yeah, I mean, uh, soccer hooligans, they don't care. They're like, my team is better than yours, and I'm going to call you names. And you're a paying uh, ticket holder. Are you allowed to abuse people? Yeah, not really. Shouldn't be at it. Boom. Young trans transgender person, individual, attempts own mastec mast what? mastectomy. Good lord. All right. So what is a mastectomy? That's the removal of your breasts. Young transgender, transgender, why can't I say it? Transgender person attempted to perform their own mastectomy highlights a healthcare system where gender diverse people's needs are being chronically unmet, experts say. A 18 year old transgender person arrived at the emergency department several hours after attempting a mastectomy with concerns he had damaged a nerve. Well, he? Wouldn't it be a she? No. Sorry, it's not. Not yet. According to the case report, Published by a New Zealand Medical Journal on Friday, the young person struggled with gender dysphoria, mental illness, a clinical term used to describe the dissonance between one's assigned gender and sense of self, and was on testosterone treatment while waiting for gender affirmation surgery. Zero patients. You know, couldn't wait. I mean, you're getting the treatment you want, but it's not fast enough. I need to be flat-chested. These breasts are making me feel uncomfortable. He was unable to access surgery in public health care system and could not afford private care. Okay, so yeah, let's just go ahead and do it myself. Because if you do it yourself, then they'll probably just finish the job for you. Currently, 
Up to 14 gender-affirming genital surgeries a year are publicly funded, but access to other forms of gender-affirming surgery varied between regions. In Wellington, under-resourcing meant it was not taking any routine referrals for chest reconstruction surgery, also known as top surgery. The young person experienced significant psychological stress of having breasts at an upcoming pool party. Just don't go. He did not have an active mood disorder, psychosis, or suicide modality and after arriving at the hospital underwent surgery to complete the left mastectomy and symmetrizing right mastectomy after four weeks his scars healed and he reported improvement in self-esteem and self-confidence in his ability to complete schoolwork so the dude is mentally handicapped or disabled or ill and uh he couldn't handle reality and life around him so he decided to mutilate his body in attempt to complete his transition the report highlighted limited access to gender affirming surgery was an increasing issue because of resources and funding. It is crucial for public services to be more accessible to an underserved population, less than 1%. Uh, Dr. Rita Yang, the country's only surgeon trained in all forms of gender affirming surgery, said it was extremely distressing to hear about the case. Absolutely, I can imagine. All surgeries came with life threatening risks, even when performed by surgeons. It could have easily ended with this person dying. I implore anyone who needs gender-affirming surgery to never even consider this for the sake of their own life. Yeah. Top surgery was complex and involved highly trained operating room staff, anesthesiologists, nurses, high hospital-level wraparound care. There are few reconstructive surgeons in New Zealand qualified to perform the surgery, and even then, there are serious risks that must be mitigated. So the, to me, the person is suicidal. If you're going to like start slicing and dicing... But then you are obviously like, you know, not averse to dying. You're going to do it yourself. I think it was all a plan. I think this person knew and they definitely like went at uh, their left breast and like mutilated themselves and was like, perfect. This is good enough. I'll go to the hospital and be like, hey, listen, I'm crazy. I tried to remove my body parts. Will you guys finish the job? Yeah. All right. Spread of deadlier mm, pox strain in Africa as CDC concerns. So this is the new name they've labeled monkeypox because uh, they feel like monkeypox uh, is like a derogatory term towards people. It's not very nice. I don't want to be associated as, with having monkeypox. So we call it mpox now. And who gets it? Disproportionately homosexual men. The Central African nation of the Democratic Republic Congo, DRC, is battling a record number of cases of mpox fueled by a strain with a higher death rate than the variant that spread in Europe and America in 2022. Getting the DRC outbreak under control and containing it uh, to within that country is imperative, experts at the U.S. Center for Disease Control and Prevention said in a report on Thursday. The spread of the lethal-clad eye strain of mpox raises concerns that the virus could spread to other countries and underscores the importance of coordinated, urgent Global action to support DRC's efforts to contain the virus, said a team led by the CDC research biologist Christina Hudson. The strain of mpox, formerly known as monkeypox, that spread from Africa to Europe and North America two years ago, was known as CLAD-2. And I'm pretty sure that happened at like a, uh, a sex festival, a gay homosexual sex festival. A bunch of people went there, and some dude had it, and spread it around. As they went back home, they then spread it around at their immoral sex parties that they have. Go ahead, Google pig party, homosexual pig party, and get ready to vomit into a bucket. While painful and sometimes severe, the illness resulted in death rate ranging from 0.1% to point to sorry 3.6% of cases, according to various studies. But CLAD-1 mpox is more lethal, and deaths from the illness have ranged anywhere from 1.4 to 10%. Patients Hudson's team noted the ongoing outbreak of CLAD-1 mpox in the DRC has already claimed many victims. DRC reports multiple provincial outbreaks occurring between the beginning of 2023, April 14th, 2024 with an estimated total of 19,919 cases and 975 deaths. So like 5%. Meaning that about one in every 20 patients have died. Not even 5%. Right? There it is. Yeah, actually 5%. The outbreak is also perhaps the most widespread during 2023 and 2024. Clad 1 MPOX cases were reported from 25 to 26 provinces. And for the first time from the capital city of Kishasha. Children are especially vulnerable, according to the report. Two-thirds of suspected cases and more than three-quarters of suspected deaths have occurred in persons aged 15 or younger. What is going on with that? Mpox is spread through close personal contact. This typically involves skin-to-skin -skin contact, so sex can often be a means of transmission. The, the like, number one. 
include symptoms including fever, chills, exhaustion, headache, muscle weakness, often followed by a rash with lesions that scab over and slowly heal over a period of weeks. Although anyone can get mpox, men who have sex with men are particularly at risk, and those who have HIV are more vulnerable to severe diseases. In two outbreaks in the DRC, sexual transmission of clad MPXV was reported among men who have sex with men and both male and female sex workers and their contacts. Yeah, so look out as well in Europe. They're accepting many, many more um, gay migrants because they're stating that being gay in Africa is a problem and they need to seek asylum. So heads up on all of that because they could be bringing this MPOX with them or at least spreading it around Europe. Teen died from eating a spicy chip as part of social media challenge, autopsy report concludes. The manufacturer of the chip, Paki, or Paqui, uh, asked retailers to stop selling the product shortly after the boy's death. So you could get this on Amazon a while ago. I don't know if you still can. Massachusetts teen who participated in a spicy tortilla chip challenge on social media died from ingesting a high amount of chili pepper extract, according to an autopsy report obtained by the Associated Press. Harris Wolaba, a 10th grader from the city of Worcester, died September 1st, 2023 after eating the chip. He was found unresponsive by police who were called to his home and brought to a hospital where he died. The, case, the cause of death story was listed as cardiopulmonary arrest, basically his heart and lungs. In the setting of recent ingestion of food substance with high capation concentration, which is chili powder, the 14-year-old boy also had an enlarged heart and congenital heart defect, according to the report. The findings with which were shared with the AP in an email from Elaine Driscoll, a spokesperson for the Massachusetts Executive Office of Public Safety and Security. The cause of death was determined on February 27th. The death certificate was released to the city clerk's office on March 5th, Driscoll said. Manufacturer the chip Packy asked retailers to stop selling shortly after death. The chip, sold individually for about $10, comes wrapped in a foil in a coffin-shaped box. Yikes, not looking good. Containing the warning that this is intended for the vengeful pleasure of intense heat and pain. The warning notes that the chip is for adult consumption only and should be kept to the reach of children. So boom, law site, lawsuit averted. It clearly states that he shouldn't have eaten it and it's 100% his fault. He had a large heart. Unfortunate. We'll pray for the little child who is uh, dead. But yeah, so heads up people. Uh, don't eat things. Don't be stupid. Know your medical conditions before you uh, go ahead and eat something spicy or go ahead and run a marathon or something like that because that could have easily just killed him just as well. All right, people, TGIF. Like and subscribe. Sigma Tiger signing out.